Tucker Carlson's fiery take on the media's portrayal of J.D. Vance is a bold defense of traditional values, authenticity, and the fight against social manipulation. Carlson argues that the media's branding of Vance as weird is a clear bias against the core values that many hold dear. Family, hard work, and conservative principles. They're not calling J.D. Vance weird because they think he's weird. Is it weird to be like a straight guy who's married with three kids? Who work hard? I mean, it's the opposite of weird, of course. It's the model. Um, it's conventional uh, or was conventional in this country. So um, it has nothing to do with that. They don't care. Um, what they care about is war. And it's not just the Democrats, it's Republicans in Washington. And they hate J.D. Vance, and they really do. And they have for a long time because he's questioned whether or not these foreign entanglements are good for the United States. It's not a matter of, do you like country X? Do you hate Ukraine or love Russia? It has nothing to do with that. The question is, should the U.S. government pursue this policy? Is it good for the United States or not? It's really simple. It's a very clear way to look at the world. And it's the only way that our leaders should be allowed to look at the world. And J.D. Vance has called them out on that. And mm -hmm. so Republican leaders, Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell and you know, many, many others, worked extraordinarily hard behind the scenes to stop J.D. Vance from getting this job. He got it anyway. They're enraged. They're working with Democrats to slander him, but they're not telling you why they're mad at him. And I think if I were the Trump campaign, I would say, we're not weird yet. Judge, of course, he's not weird. Or maybe he is. Who cares? The future right. of the country is at stake here. You're leading mm -hmm. us down the wrong path. You hate J.D. Vance because he's called you out on it. And we're opposed to your program. That's the problem here. And I, I think buying into any of this crap, like, you know, Carmela's social media brat stuff, like, who cares? It's stupid. You know, that's for teenage girls. This is the United States of America. It's the most powerful country in the world. It's in decline. How do we stop that decline? By making better decisions. The opposite of the decisions that she and her senile partner have made for four years. So I, that's how I would address it. Like, don't even play along, actually. Yeah, I, I can see that. I can see that. I mean, it's just so ironic. As some California Kamala, as I like to call her, of anybody course. from California calling anybody else weird is, is weird on the surface. Well, yeah, but everything they say is the opposite of what the word actually means. The defenders sure. of democracy just took out the sitting president with not a vote being cast. They threatened yeah. him into not running again. That's not democracy. That's the opposite of democracy. That's oligarchy. It's very obvious. It's mm -hmm. out in the open. So these are the defenders of democracy. No, of course, they hate democracy. According to Carlson, J.D. Vance embodies the quintessential American dream, a devoted family man with three kids and a relentless work ethic. Yet the media elite, favoring a more progressive narrative, targets him, attacking the very fabric of traditional family life. This, Carlson insists, is not just an attack on Vance, but an assault on the values that define America's heartland. In a world that increasingly celebrates diversity and nonconformity, labeling Vance as weird is paradoxically a testament to his commitment to authenticity and tradition. It underscores the courage required to stand firm in one's beliefs amidst a tide of social pressure to conform. Carlson sees this media campaign as a sinister form of social control, a strategy to marginalize those who resist certain political or social norms. By creating an us versus them narrative, the media divides the public, pitting traditional values against progressive ideals. Carlson's assertion that the media's attack on Vance stems from his dissent on foreign policy highlights a broader strategy to silence opposition and maintain a tight grip on public discourse. Reactions to Carlson's commentary and the media's portrayal of Vance are sharply polarized. Supporters of Vance and conservative values rally behind Carlson, seeing his defense as validation of their beliefs and a spotlight on media bias. This division mirrors the intense polarization in American politics today, where media narratives and political identities are deeply entangled, each side entrenched in their ideological camps.